the ground effects work really well. How soft do you think the rubber is? How well do you think the driver's seat? The centrepiece of the Subaru stand at this year's Australian International Motor Show is this sensational looking Liberty B4 GT300 from the popular Japanese Super GT series. Subaru made its reputation here in Australia with its rally team and high performance image. The company's been out of the sport for quite a few years now, but Nick Senior, Subaru's general manager here in Australia, would love an opportunity to come back. And Super GT just might be the answer. Look, I'd love to be in motorsport um, and unfortunately um, the Australian Rally Championship is uh, not an avenue that we're, is getting um, mainstream appeal. Um, so we've been looking at other areas that uh, have a possible appeal and I've been looking at this series in Japan which is a fantastic series, it's very competitive, fans love it, great audiences and I think the cars are pretty, um, you know, pretty wild, special looking but they are based on production cars. So uh, that's what excites me. I think what, what, what is also interesting is that there's a number of Japanese manufacturers uh, here represented at the Motor Show today that do have cars running in that Super GT 300, 500 series in Japan. Um, and uh, basically those companies are alienated from motorsport in Australia. Now wouldn't it be great if they all got together and thought, geez, we've got those cars, um, can we put a series together in, uh, in Australia and... Um, um, you know, a, appeal to a younger fan base um, who you know like the technology of Japanese cars, like some of the performance characteristics, um, and uh, here is a, um, you know, a uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of a uh, testing the water, if you like. My vision for it is that um, you know this is not just an Australian series. I would like to see an Asia Pacific series, or you know, if you like, a Southeast Asian series that you know we we could kick up, kick off in New Zealand with a race. Um, three races in Australia and then go to Malaysia, um, a couple of races or three in Japan, then China is a growing market and there's some other Southeast Asian countries. And what the benefit is um, we're all on roughly on the same time zone, you know, one or two or three hours difference. Um, so it could all be beamed in around Southeast Asia, which has got the biggest television audience um, uh, in the world uh, with China and India and as in India, throw India into the mix as well. So uh, if, if, if we come up with a series that is uh, you know, across Southeast Asia um, with an audience of billions, and I'm not saying that you know, flippantly, there are billions of people, uh, China and India. Um, and I think you know, there's a huge opportunity and it just it needs someone to, uh, to pick up this ball and run with it. So have you spoken to Super GT promoters at all? No, I haven't. I've spoken to the factory and I've been, um, uh, I've been trying to get to a round last year, which unfortunately I couldn't get to. Hopefully I could get to one this year. Uh, hopefully having the car here may uh, prick the interest of a couple of the other Japanese manufacturers. Um, I'm, I'm you know, contemplating that we probably uh, you know, call a meeting or something of them and see whether there's interest uh, in this. Um, uh, because... I, I think a Southeast Asian series with, uh, say, 10 or 12, 15 races, um, with some of the distributors in each country having a, having a car, um, you know, Subaru Australia, Subaru Japan, uh, Subaru China or whatever, you would not only have competition against the other makes, but you'd have competition amongst the other distributors. And you could get 30, 40 cars on a grid you know, without too much drama. Um, it's difficult at the moment in the sense that we, you know, the industry's coming out of the GFC, the Japanese industry has obviously been hardly, uh, hard hit by the uh, earthquake and tsunami, but I think long-term planning is needed and a bit of a long-term vision about what we could put together. What about V8 supercars? They're going to the car of the future, as it's called. Essentially, it's a, a silhouette formula, although they're not keen to, to call it that. I mean, they've said that this opens up to companies like Subaru. Is there any appeal at, at all in that, or is it just so far away from what you actually produce for the road that it has no value? Oh, it has no appeal. Um, you know, I, I think what we are demonstrating is the technology of individual brands, the chance for them to put their own individual footprint and their own DNA into their race cars. That's what we're all about. Well, I know whenever we screen uh, Super GT here on Inpit Lane, we get a, an incredible response. We would love to see the cars here in Australia. And uh, thanks for bringing this one out. It's, uh, it's something that we certainly, uh, I think, will bring a lot of Inpit Lane viewers to uh, the Australian International Motor Show. But for now, Nick Senior, thanks for joining us, Inpit Lane. Thank you, and I'd love to see 50 of these come down Conrad on uh, lap one. Wouldn't we all? <laughs> An Australian round of the Super GT has been raised in the past, but now with a major manufacturer interested in assisting the push, 
the chance to see these spectacular cars here down under may have taken a small step closer. If you're looking for a great place to stay for all the big events at Phillip Island, a family getaway or just to get away from your family, then head to the All Seasons Phillip Island Resort. Have a great meal in the Numbers Restaurant and Bar, wood-fired pizzeria, play tennis, work out in the gym or just relax by the pool. The All Seasons Phillip Island Resort is only three kilometres from the world-famous Grand Prix circuit and it's a great place to stay whether you're a racer, official or fan. The All Seasons Phillip Island Resort, proud supporters of local motorsport and in pit lane.